So where does Venezuela go from here? When will things get better and will they get even worse in the years ahead? I'm joined from the U.S. city of Philadelphia by George Ticarella Marr. He's an associate professor of politics at Drexel University. George, uh, your first book is a history of revolutionary movements in Venezuela. It's called We Created Chavez. Hugo Chavez died a little more than three years ago. How did things go so far off the rails so quickly in Venezuela, do you think? Well, I think a number of factors emerged. The first, of course, was the death of Chavez himself, which led the Venezuelan opposition to really engage in a brutal, uh, brutally antagonistic relationship with the Maduro government, even before Maduro was elected. And on top of that, you've got, of course, this creeping economic crisis, which began with some certain currency distortions and was dramatically exacerbated by this collapse in global oil prices. But what you've seen is a continuity of, on the one hand, the uh, Venezuela's uh, government supporters uh, supporting and pushing this government to improve, uh, to attempt to deal with these questions in, in, a, in, a, in a way that suits them, as you heard in some of these reports on the ground. But you've also had this, this opposition attempting now to unseat the government and take advantage of this economic crisis to engage in a political uh, you know, ch change in power. I referenced uh, just a moment ago this question of things getting even worse. We have a projection of GDP per capita in Venezuela. The International Monetary Fund says that in 2011, there was about $9,500 of GDP for every person in Venezuela in 2020. That is expected to be cut nearly in half to $5,500 per capita. What is life like right now for the average working person in Venezuela? And, and does it look that bleak to you going forward? Well, the reality is that, of course, life is very difficult for many people right now. As the report that you just aired suggested, but didn't really go into, um, many of these difficulties that are going on now, if we're talking about the electricity, have everything to do with a very dramatic drought that just hit Venezuela during this year um, and that has only now broken. And so hopefully, in terms of food supply, some of these things will be improved, some of the electricity supply in that hydroelectric dam. I'm not sure about those projections uh, because uh, you, we were talking about oil prices bottoming out a few months ago, and they will now be rebounding. Um, by, by a fairly significant amount, and that should help take the edge off some of this recession. Um, the reality, though, is that Venezuela, for not decades but nearly a century, has been dependent on oil, has not been producing what it needs to consume. Um, and one of the ironic uh, advantages or silver linings to a crisis like this is that Venez the Venezuelan government now is really having to rely on domestic production when it comes to food especially, and so is now supporting uh, these new distribution networks to distribute food that is produced domestically to people's doorsteps, all in an attempt to get around some of the difficulties that this crisis is posing. And that's not to say that this is a solution. The reality is things are going to get difficult. The political opposition has announced that they're going to make things more difficult in an attempt to remove this government as quickly as possible. Um, and so we can expect months of crisis, but with some possibilities of a turnaround coming through. Uh, you, you mentioned drought, recession, uh, the drop in oil prices. You've got a, a very aggressive opposition uh, movement, as you said. Maduro's resisting calls to resign. He's pledging to stay in office despite this recall effort. Can he survive? Um, it looks as though he probably can. Um, we should bear in mind that Nicolas Maduro was elected democratically. His term goes until 2019, and yet the Venezuelan opposition, upon democratically winning control of the National Assembly in December, immediately announced their objective of removing him from power within six months. This was made perfectly clear as their intention. Uh, first, they attempted to shorten the presidential term retroactively, which the Supreme Court, of course, said is not constitutional. And so now they're taking the recall route. They have a tough, uh, a tough road to hoe in the sense that they have to deliver for millions of signatures by December, and those signatures really have to all be approved and, and confirmed as being valid signatures uh, before this referendum can go ahead. And then they need to win the referendum. George, thanks so much for joining us from Philadelphia. Really appreciate it.